Welcome to another lecture by Medicomedics, Microbiology and Infectious Diseases, Chapter 9, Principles of Sterilization and Disinfection. In this lecture, we will present an introduction to sterilization and disinfection, to mention some methods, some processes, disinfection methods, discuss antiseptics versus disinfectants, and then continuing down, we will mention some common misuses of disinfection and end with a summary. Now, sterilization means the complete elimination of all microbes, including spores, while disinfection is the reduction of harmful microbes to a safe level. Importance here is to prevent infections in healthcare settings to ensure safety in food and water. So, sterilization and disinfection are like deep cleaning for microbes. Where sterilization removes all microbes, disinfection makes things safe by essentially reducing their number. Now, some methods. We have some physical methods of sterilization, like heat. It is the most common and most effective method. So, moist heat through the process of autoclaving is 121 degrees Celsius under pressure. And it kind of works like a pressure cooker. Then we have dry heat, like hot air ovens. Another way is radiation. We're using UV light or gamma rays. Filtration, removing microbes from liquid and air. So... Sterilization uses tools, essentially like heat or light or even chemicals. For example, there is, it's not mentioned here, but we have ethylene oxide gas and it sterilizes delicate instruments that we use. But anyway, sterilization uses tools like these, heat, radiation, uh, light or chemicals indeed to destroy microbes. Autoclaving, the gold standard in sterilization. An autoclave is like a super-powered pressure cooker used in hospitals and labs to make tools completely germ-free. It's quite fast to do, it's effective, and very reliable. Now, how it works is it combines high temperature, so 121 degrees Celsius, and pressure, of 15 uh, pound per square inch psi. And it uses this combination of these two, so high pressure and high temperature, to kill all microbes and spores. Some applications of this, well, sterilizing surgical instruments, lab glassware, and other things. Limitations. It's not suitable for heat-sensitive materials. Now then, moving on from sterilization to disinfection methods. So we have types of disinfectants like alcohol, for example, ethanol and isopropanol. These are effective against bacteria and viruses. We use chlorine compounds like bleach. It kills a broad range of microbes. Quaternary Ammonium compounds, so quats. These are used for surface cleaning. Hydrogen peroxide, effective on hard surfaces. Some applications of these, cleaning hospital surfaces, instruments, and household items. Now, let's talk antiseptics versus disinfectants. So, antiseptics are used on living tissues like skin. Examples include alcohol, iodine, chlorhexidine. And uh, antiseptics are gentle cleaners, safe for our skin. Now, compared to antiseptics, we have these disinfectants, where, which are stronger and meant for cleaning surfaces like floors and countertops, etc. So they are used on non-living surfaces. Again, antiseptics, living tissues like skin on humans. Disinfectants used on non-living surfaces. Example include bleach and quats. 
and clinical relevance, antiseptics used for wound care and disinfectants for cleaning surfaces. Now let's mention some levels of disinfection. So we have high level disinfection where we kill all microbes except some spores. Example, glutarol dehyde for surgical instruments. We have intermediate level disinfection where we kill bacteria, viruses, and fungi, but not spores. Example, alcohol. Then we have low level disinfection. These reduces microbial load um, less effective against some bacteria and viruses. Example, quads for general cleaning. Now, what are some factors affecting disinfection and sterilization? Key factors include microbial load. So the more microbes, the harder to sterilize. The type of microbe, so spores and viruses, are more resistant. Contact time, longer exposure, improves effectiveness. Another factor is material compatibility. So some materials can't handle heat or chemicals. So all in all, the effectiveness depends on number of germs, the type of germs, how long the cleaner stays in contact with it, and some items need special care indeed to avoid damage. Microbial resistance to sterilization and disinfection. So more resistant uh, microbes include, for example, prions. These are infectious proteins and it needs extreme heat to get rid of, like 132 degrees Celsius. Bacterial spores require autoclaving. And if you remember, autoclaving was the combination of high temperature and high pressure. The least resistant enveloped viruses like influenza, vegetative bacteria like E. coli. Now, sterilization and disinfection in healthcare. So, applications sterilizing surgical tools, catheters, and syringes. Disinfecting hospital rooms and high-touch surfaces. Another application is in preventing healthcare-associated infections. So proper sterilization reduces the risk of healthcare-associated infections, like, for example, MR MRSA or methylene, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, if my memory serves me right. Now, common misuses of disinfection. Examples can include overuse of disinfectants leading to microbial resistance, improper dilution of cleaning agents, not following contact time recommendations, consequences, well, reduced effectiveness and an increased risk of infections. This sort of makes sense. So in summary then, sterilization eliminates all microbes. Disinfection reduces them to safe levels. Different methods are used depending on the situation and the material. Proper use is critical to preventing infections and maintaining safety. And that's the end of this lecture. Continue now to chapter 10.